it looks like a lot of people from the poll are using social media as an individual. So today we're going to try to um, tailor it towards that. We are also going to have another webinar next week with Earthwise. Um, Rachel is here. Rachel Van Wert, she is a coworker who um, coordinates the Earthwise business uh, networking program. Rachel, do you want to say hi? Hi everybody, I'm glad you're here. And yes, if you are looking for tips specific to business, next week you get to join Jessica and myself again and we'll be tailoring a quick 30 minute kind of lunch and learn um, for businesses to look at how to tell their sustainable story in the media, especially now. I think that's important that people know we're here and we're still doing um, not just practices to keep people well, but um, practices to keep the planet well as well. And then um, Rachel's also gonna be our moderator today. Thank you, Rachel, for being a wingman. Um, and if, just to help us out, if you could save your questions to the end, that would be super helpful. Um, also, I'm going to move on to the next slide since we're kind of starting. Um, we also have, oops, Summer in the house. Summer, can you say hi? Hi there. So Summer has taken the Master Recycler class um, and she is just an, an awesome influencer here in Kaiser and Salem, Oregon. Uh, she does amazing stories, so I wanted to invite her um, here today to share her tips seriously like there's nobody else I know that uh, puts out such engaging stories so we'll have a, some time to talk about that today um, and I'm Jessica Ramey a waste reduction coordinator for Marion County Environmental Services this is my day job I love it and um, there up there is my email address I'll be sending this information to you like I said before um, in a recording as well as any links that I'm mentioning today so um, Let's get started and talk about what we are talking about today. Let's see if I can stop this poll so I can actually see my screen. So we're gonna talk about how we use social media in Marion County um, and more specifically environmental services. Also talk about how social media has had a great impact for global action and campaigns there. Um, and then talk about this crazy Facebook algorithm that everybody's trying to figure out so people can actually see the posts that you're posting. We're also gonna talk about how to keep people engaged um, and kind of craft who you are, what your social media persona is going to be um, and tell stories from being an authentic person um, to build trust and generate demand. And then summer, summer. <laughs> I'm still excited, Summer's here, is going to share um, information about crafting her stories on Facebook and Instagram. And then we're gonna to try to give plenty of time for questions and answers as well. So, let's see. Um, Marion County uses Facebook kind of differently between um, our different divisions and departments. But environmental services really finds this as an amazing tool to engage the community about waste prevention. So we know how powerful it is to um, put out statements or show pictures of waste prevention in action. And we've reached out and found followers. Um, I think Summer, maybe that might be how you got engaged with Marion County in the first place. I'm not quite sure. Um, but we use uh, yeah, it. I'm not sure. Either. Go ahead. I, I'm not sure either. When I look back, I I don't know. I think I kind of stalked you guys a little bit before I even got involved. Right. I, I love that. <laughs> that's absolutely, that's like warranted and loved stalking. That's loud. Um, <laughs> because we use it to promote events and classes. And I think the first time I met Summer, I think she, before she did a Trashy Tuesday, but she participated in one of our waste less events. So it's like talking about zero waste. And so that's how I met Summer. And then I just got to know Summer more through social media. So finding ways to connect with people, not only just your friends, but also strangers that you might have similar interests um, with is such a powerful thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's also a great way to celebrate our wins and our achievements. So uh, Marion County Environmental Services has a couple of programs. We um, are kind of kicking off this wasteless, zero waste um, programming and connecting people that way. But we also have the traditional programs like Mass Recyclers, which Summer took. Um, and that really helps with residents and, and 
just teaching them like the nitty gritty of waste uh, prevention, recycling, and how our solid waste um, program works. And then we also have um, a program that Rachel runs, which is Earthwise, and that's for businesses. Um, and so whenever those people are talking about some of their successes, we love to promote that as much as possible. And Facebook and um, Instagram is a great way to do that. We also have um, just basic requirements through um, Department of Environmental Quality that we have to achieve. Um, that's called the Opportunity Recycle Act that's been around for a long time and they've added waste prevention um, activities as well. So um, we just find social media to be an extra tool in our tool belt to help engage people. I'm having a hard time with clicking. Oops, apparently it's just lagging. Okay, so, um, you know, it's such a great tool for us as environmental services, but just globally how this thing works together. So everybody knows dear Greta, Greta Thunberg. Um, she showed up as a 15 year old who was really grumpy about how people are using resources and how nobody was really talking about climate change. So she showed up um, at uh, the Swedish parliament and she had, she started this global strike for students and she used social media to be able to tell her story and connect with more people. Um, and it just had this giant snowball effect. So then eventually she went to the United Nations Climate um, Change Conference and then the 19, or 2019 UN um, Climate Action Summit where she gave that famous speech of how dare you. But since then she's just been um, getting more and more followers. Um, she uses the, um, oh, Fridays for the future uh, hashtag to connect with people and to engage a younger population. Another great example is, of course, the sea turtles. Um, when in 2015, a marine biologist was um, collecting sea turtles and tagging them for scientific purposes and found a little piece of plastic inserted in this um, turtle's nose, and they ended up removing it um, and putting that video up on YouTube, and it went completely viral. 30.7 million people um, watch that video. And then from there, it snowballed again. Um, the Stop Sucking campaign. Um, there's a bunch of other organizations that got started there. Granted, straw and plastic waste um, or straws are not like the number one threat for ocean or um, animal habitat, but it gave this platform of talking about that and connect and building those connections between when I go and purchase something, it really can impact the end, um, you know, habitat for these animals. So it really helped people talk about plastic bans from there and um, it just got it on people's radar. So we've talked about how that can work for an individual. We've talked about how that works for um, somebody using that platform for work. Let's talk about for a business. So I think most people are familiar with Tom's. Tom's makes shoes and they would always um, have this one for one kind of program of you buy one shoe and then a needy person gets shoes um, and they are given shoes for free. So they started a campaign on Instagram where they challenged people not to buy shoes from the, their company. It was just, just wonderful altruistic um, event that they planned and it's called One Day Without Shoes, where they encouraged people to post a picture of themselves barefoot. And for every hashtag of um, without shoes, Tom's would give a free one to somebody in need. So um, it's a great way for businesses to also reach out and talk about their sustainable story uh, and reach a whole different demographic than they normally would. So let's talk about a little bit why social media is important and try to tackle that whole entire Facebook logarithm that has everybody's head spinning. Um, typically with traditional media, it's slow and it's a one-on-one -on -one kind of um, relationship. So I'd go and buy my local paper, I'd read it, I might talk to my friends about it, but that's pretty much it. It wouldn't, it, that message would stop from there. Um, but social media is a much more democratic way. You don't have to buy anything to engage, um, as well as has this wonderful snowball effect 
of connecting with other people. It just ripples out. So in, um, instead of one-on-one, -on -one, I can have a conversation in real time with people and really get to see how that message is interacting with my friends and my family and the people I care about. Having a hard time progressing with slides for some reason. Um, so Facebook has been kind of called out for their logarithm for a long time. They weren't really transparent about this and um, even kind of deceptive practices to some extent of they are having an effect on how people feel. Um, and so Facebook really wanted to get behind this and kind of change how they're working with their platform. And so in 2018, they started um, coming out and talking more about their logarithm and how they're upgrading it. So essentially their purpose is, um, they say, to help people connect with the stories that matter to them most. And so they really started understanding or trying to understand what is it that matters to the people? Because we have such a short amount of time to connect with others um, and to actually, you know, we get all this content thrown at us, but such a short amount of time. So they really want to make a product that resonates with people and that people find helpful. So they started ranking these things and they've been ranking posts for a long time now, but they've been a little bit more um, transparent about how they're ranking it. So who posted um, the content is helpful for Facebook to know um, when it's posted, what type of content, and how many people are interacting with the posts. So essentially what's happening is, is I as a user of Facebook get to make a vote. Every time I friend somebody, I like a business, that is my vote. Um, anytime I comment, anytime I have any interaction, or even when I say hide this post, I don't want to see it, that's a negative kind of vote. Um, so essentially each and every, this is mind boggling to think, each and every post has a, um, a number, a score attached to it. And that's true of Summer's score will be different than my score because I might think something's more powerful than she does um, or resonates more. Or maybe I have a better connection. Maybe my brother is a better connection for me than Summer. I sure hope so. I'm sure hoping I'm seeing my friends and my family post at the very beginning. So Facebook's really trying to understand this and, and get ahead with it. Um, they have um, testers that are putting out this information. When Facebook puts something out and says, I'm good, I think this is what I would score this for you. And then they're kind of giving the reality test of like, oh, something's more important or not. Um, and sharing that with Facebook. So essentially, things get scored. So if I'm logging into Facebook today, um, I'm going to, or Facebook's going to have these different posts, um, maybe one from a publisher, one from a family, one from a friend, and they're all given these different scores. And then when I click on my feed, Facebook's going to pretty much assign it into a cat or an organization with the most important stuff thinking that the things that I think are going to be the most important are going to be at the top to, and then it keeps going down from there. So, um, like I said, there's ways to vote to get, to get, um, your vo voice heard, but they started adding more controls from people too. So before you're able to like something, you're able to comment. Um, but we didn't have this like hide button or see first at, in the beginning of Facebook. So they're really encouraging people to give feedback through these controls. Um, if you've never unfollowed people, I certainly recommend it. If you get so exhausted with somebody, unfollow that person, it's completely okay. It's okay to hide your Aunt Martha's crazy rants about things you don't agree with. They don't know about it. Um, but what it does is gives Facebook information about what you actually wanna see. And then also it's true for pages as well. So what happened with this new logarithm is that it means that everybody I'm engaged with, I wanna see their posts first, but typically I don't see businesses posts. If you wanna see businesses posts more often, you wanna click the see first it, um, option for businesses because they're really going to start getting buried. So this is a great way to start supporting sustainable businesses, businesses that you have aligned values with, um, and start clicking see first. 
would love it if you would do that for Marion County Environmental Services. Um, so you can actually see the events that you're interested in and that are coming up. So what does this mean for a poster? So if I'm going to post content, um, essentially it kind of works this way. So I post something, do my friends and my family, do my core people like what they're seeing? And if they're engaged in it, it's gonna move forward. But if they're not engaged in it, and they're like, oh, this just does not resonate with me, it's gonna stop dead in the water. So what that means is, is we really need to connect with our communities, our, our core people, and get them participating in what we do. Um, as a business, as a person, I want to make sure that what I'm doing affects people or it's just not going to get heard. Um, and then after your friends approve it, essentially, then it goes to this wider audience, this ripple effect. It's going to go to the next set of people and says, do you like this? Does this work for you? And if people love it, they'll pass it on. They'll share it. They'll comment. They'll like it. And it will keep going further and further until eventually, if you're lucky enough, it will go viral. Um, but if not, it just goes away. It's like never, never land, right? The island of the misfits. So that's what we don't want things to, to do when you're posting. Nobody wants that to happen. Um, but it's hard. It's hard to gauge because something I'm really passionate about, like upcycling, you know, I'm so excited about it. I think everybody's going to be excited about it. But that's probably not true. So I need to make sure that... Um, I'm either building an audience that really cares about that thing, or I'm a little bit better about how I talk about upcycling with the people that it doesn't really resonate with them. So essentially it's this ever cycling kind of thing. If you post content that connects with people, you're gonna get more likes, you're gonna get higher engagement, higher reach, and more followers. So that's kind of the nuts and bolts of the logarithm. Um, we could go into a lot more specifics about that, but um, let's talk a little bit about engagement and how we actually craft messages that will resonate with people, um, as well as who, who are you? What's your persona? What are you going to put out there to Facebook or social media? Also talk about when's a good time to post, how to get social, and how to use hashtags. So I'm not going to focus on the business part right now. I'm going to focus on more of yourself since a lot of people said that they are um, individuals using Facebook. Um, these are questions that I think it's good for everybody to ask and kind of de define who they are and what they want their persona to be on Facebook. So while you might be an individual, I think it's also good to think about how you're branding yourself, just like a business would. Um, what you're putting out there, is that really what you want to be known for? And think about that every sing single time you post something. So these are kind of questions that will help you guide, guide you there. Um, three words that define you. Just keep it simple. What are three words? Just write them down. What sets you apart from other people? How do, um, what do your friends love about you? Or how do you influence friends? Like, for instance, my friends often come to me and they're like, Jess, I would be, you'd be so proud of me. I learned to recycle this play thing and now I'm starting to recycle this, which is great, right? Um, think about how your friends interact with you and how you're known to them. That's going to be part of your story. That's going to be part of your authentic self. Also then, how does that impact, um, how does social media impact your story about environmentalism? So if you've taken the Master Recycler class, which I think a lot of people have, um, think about how you tell that message to other people. Why do you care about the environment? What got you to be a Master Recycler in the first place? Um, what do you do differently than your counterparts and your friends? How, how do you engage with um, Master Recycling in your private life? You know, what does that look like on a daily basis? Um, what would you tell somebody who's just getting started in sustainability? Um, and what kind of environmental impact do you have? So think of, you know, that straw thing of instead of just talking about, hey, guys, I'm not purchasing straws. Maybe you're going to talk about at the end of, hey, this is why I'm not purchasing it and show a picture of the sea turtle. Um, how does that impact relate to others? Um, why is it hard for others? You can address that about why it might be really hard to recycle these things 
but it's still really good to do so. Um, and then also think about what spheres that touch um, the environmental message, but aren't really directly related to environmentalism. So um, as a master recycler, you know, I might be really interested in upcycling and recycling, um, but maybe there's businesses that um, are selling zero waste stuff or um, different um, sustainable businesses that really talk about my message, but talk about it in a different way or approach it from a different angle. That's good to write down and understand. So we talked about building your authentic self and figuring out that kind of brand. Um, you're building a recipe here. And so then you think about the ingredients that you're going to add. How are these things um, going to interact and, and play together? So when you figure out what you want to be known for and how you want that to be represented, these are the methods that we can um, tell our story. So maybe you want to talk about your values, the things that you really believe in, things that really make your heart ache and um, make you sore, you know, and make you super happy. Maybe you're going to post a throwback to or Thursday uh, image of your five-year-old self recycling or um, any kind of back history of who, who's made you, who you are, what kind of influences. Um, back behind the scenes pictures of maybe you made, I did this once, I made a, um, a slushy or a, a, a milkshake and it exploded everywhere. And of course I took the nice picture, but then I showed the, the behind the scenes picture and people love that. People love to see that you aren't this perfect human being and we make mistakes every once in a while. So show that messy room that you're working in um, and be really authentic. You can also um, do product posts about what you like, some of your favorite things, um, what you do. Uh, maybe you're gonna post a daily um, schedule of like, guys, I woke up at five o'clock, I had coffee, you know, um, my commute was this long. People get to know you through those stories, as well as curated content. We often talk about putting out content that's really unique and personal to yourself. But if there are um, business crushes that you have or crushes on other uh, social media influencers, share them and share why you really love this stuff. The same with reviews as well. And then tips and tutorials. Everybody loves a tip and tutorial. Even asking questions about people's um, tips about certain problems you might have. Where do I find a washing machine that's going to last for a long time? Um, putting out those kind of posts really help engage people. So um, we can also talk about the platforms and the best way to reach people. People are still really engaged in Facebook. You're gonna get an older demographic um, then, for instance, Instagram or Snapchat, of course. But um, also think about, too, not just meeting people where they are, but um, also think about how you like to tell your message. So I am a very visual person. I like to use pictures a lot. I don't love to type words and, and write. So I'm going to typically choose Instagram and Facebook. Um, but Twitter would be fabulous if you're a great storyteller and you love to, you know, uh, wordsmith and put words together and tell your message that way. Um, it's also really important to check out when to post on Facebook and Instagram. Sprout Social is a great place to go to to find that information. Um, through uh, This one is a global kind of engagement to show globally all of social media um, when's a good time to place it. But there's also um, industry specific times to post that are helpful. So go to Sprout uh, Social for more of that information. It also differs from Instagram, so they give you that information as well. Um, and then also just call on your tribe, your crew, your um, employee or employees or coworkers, anybody who can tell your message and, and um, you know, kind of say, hey, this is something that I think is valuable because people are not interested in hearing from your brand or your business. They get exhausted with it, quite honestly. They feel it's spammy. But if a friend can say, hey, I trust them and this is what happened, um, it's lovely. And that's one reason why um, 
summer is awesome because she does this constantly. She's building these connections with people, people that she doesn't even know, brands she doesn't know, but she's reaching out and making them feel valuable. And then she becomes a trusted influencer doing that. And it's also really important to, to get your coworkers and employees to try to post these things. Um, we have very few people who do this on social media. Thank goodness Rachel does, um, my coworker who's on the call today. Um, but without you getting that core of people, like remember that flow chart, it's not gonna get out the first gate if you, if you post something and people aren't liking it. Um, another great method of, of posting is using videos. Facebook has been very, very clear that videos are way more engaging to people. And it makes sense. Like if you're gonna post just text, nobody's gonna read it. If you post text with images, it's okay. But videos, you get to hear somebody's voice. You get to feel engaged with that person. You know instantly if you agree with that person or you disagree with that person. So it's a really great way to connect with people. The other thing about social media that I think some people forget is to actually get social. And I call on government agencies for this because it is awful. And um, I've gone to meetings about social media and they're like, yeah, just don't, don't answer those questions or just don't participate. But honestly, people use social media like they use a phone call. If you picked up the phone and you heard the first sentence out of that person's voice and you hung up on them, that person would feel awful. And I feel that social media is much like that. If somebody's sharing something or asking you a question, have the decency to respond and to be thoughtful in that response. Um, especially younger demographic of people, they don't pick up the phone and call. They're going to DM you. They're going to um, post on your on your page or comment. And I think those um, those things have been perceived as le as lesser inter actions and they're not at all. I think they're similar. So like people rep respond to what they're saying on your on your post. And that post actually gets higher in the rankings every single time you do that too. So it not only just helps you and and how you interact with people, but in general, it's a best practice. Also, um make sure that you're thinking socially externally too. So we get very uh kind of zoomed into what we're posting. But start looking at what other people are posting, like and reply to those things. Start reaching out to people that, and it seems scary if you're not used to social media, um, it's okay to talk to strangers. <laughs> um, it's a completely safe thing to do. Um, so think about that. And it's okay to say, hey, this is really cool. It might seem creepy at first, but that is exactly what social media is for, is to engage strangers and people with like interests. Um, and then share your customer posts as well as a business. So on Instagram, what engagement looks like is liking people's posts at least five times, comment at least three times on that person, and then follow that person, build up a relationship. Uh, that's what it's about is the relationship building. You wouldn't just spam and put a link on somebody's Instagram and say like, come look at my thing. That's not engaging and that's not kind to do. Start having that conversation with a person. The other great thing to do is use hashtags on Instagram, um, most of all. So I rarely use them on Facebook unless I'm trying to categorize something I'm looking at later. But on Instagram, it's such a wonderful way to connect people. So essentially a hashtag is a way for um, the computer and, and the social media to categorize things. You can search through the hashtags and use them. So with your core statements, with those questions that I gave you earlier, look at some of the words that you put down and come up with a list of hashtags that you've used or that you wanna be using in the future and keep that list and add to that list. And then you can start searching for other hashtags that resonate with you and see what those influencers are using for their hashtags. And then you just keep growing your list and it might depend upon what you're posting on Instagram what your hashtag you're going to use, but that's okay. Um, and try to use a lot. Like it might seem ridiculous to list 15 hashtags, but do it. Because if you want to grow and you want to reach out to people, people are searching through that hashtag. And they'll come across your post and they'll say, oh, I don't know this person, but I, I really love this. And they might start following you. So definitely do that.
So I'm kind of, we're going fast, but it's, we only have an hour and I want to give enough time to um, have questions too. But I definitely want to um, touch base with Summer because we haven't even really talked about this behind the scenes. And I really just want to know her, um, her awesome tips because her, her stories are so engaging. So Summer, um, I will play your, um, your button pusher and hopefully advance the slides whenever you want. Um, but she, she crafts these amazing vulnerable stories and I just want her to be able to talk about that a little bit. So Summer, feel free to take over. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Summer Reyes, a strong community activist. Um, I, social media, is tough um and it it does the the way that i approach it is to be really vulnerable and for me that pays off um people can really relate to that vulnerability and it isn't always positive i've gone on you know rants over the way people use single use products, let's say, you know, when I'm shopping, how I get triggered, I put that in my stories and then immediately I thought, you should delete that, but I don't. I leave it out there and I show that, you know, things like single use products really do cause a trigger in me. Um, but in that, with taking the master recycling class as well, it's given me another perspective, which I think is great to have when you're always broadening your perspective. You know, you're always figuring out your lane isn't the only lane that I have to pause. And sometimes in my story, I don't pause and I fire it off and then I think, oh gosh, but I leave it, you know? And it's not, the that vulnerability it's so scary. I mean, just this morning I posted that I was so scary to, you know, to do the Zoom because it is scary, but what's going to happen? You know, I don't have a lot of followers that follow my grid. Um, if you were to go to look at my profile, you wouldn't see a high amount of followers, but I have over 700 views each day on my story because I am active. Um, and it's from all over the world. And I do, I talk all the time and joke that I need an Instagram secretary because <laughs> it's just really impossible for me to respond to all the messages. And I tell my, you know, friends, don't, don't, please don't DM me on Instagram because it gets buried in the amount of messages that people just reach out and they'll say, you know, ask me a question about a business that I promote or a place that I feel safe in or, you know, um, how to, like the other day when I, you know, I posted something about hanging your bag, your reusable bag off of your body um, so that you're not touching things when you're out shopping during a pandemic. And that created all these questions um, about what do we do now shopping in a pandemic and you know, going out and, you know, all the single use products that everyone is going back to because, you know, of what's going on. And so it's, it's really fun, but yeah, it is really scary um, to put yourself out there. And I, I just say, Hey, I'm scared. You know, this is scary. Um, and yeah, people, they, the response is great. It isn't always great. No, it's not always great. Sometimes people save stuff and they send it right back to me. I had an old, my account, I had to switch accounts on Instagram due to bullying. And it was the wildest thing to me. Um, and I had to get Instagram involved with it. And it was a whole like vegan movement that were bullying me over being a conscious carnivore and also being an environmentalist. And it hurt so bad, but I just kept on, you know, because I just feel that 
I have something to say and what I say is valuable. And I do get in my guts. Of course, my personal opinion is in there, but there is a responsibility that I feel to pause. You know, it doesn't always work. It, it doesn't always work to take that pause before posting, but I, I try. I try to be really inclusive also with my posting. I think one important thing um, that I try to remember, even when I talk or I post is, is this the truth? And I think that that's something that's really important to hold on to. So, yeah. Yeah, I love that you're a risk taker and that um, I think that just makes you more human, this, this vulnerability part of like, it might seem scary, but you still do it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think people respect that quite a bit. Um, Summer, can you um, mention what your uh, account is so people can follow you? It is Manic Dirt Eater on Instagram. Yeah, and, and Summer often puts out things too, like, I work for the county and we're pretty conservative about what we put out, but I feel that Summer puts a different spin on things and it's able to get way more personal than I would ever be able to as a business account person. So I appreciate that oftentimes. Um, and then you talked about inclusivity um, and access a little bit. Could you talk about what um, this slide is it's showing that you're giving a video in your, in your story? And then you've added this new app, right? Right. So um, in, you know, my mission just all day um, is to just be really inclusive and allow space for others. So I, um, Cleptomanic, I think is what this app is called. And what it does is it takes any audio that you're talking about in your story um, and it puts the words to it. So it's putting a closed caption on your story, which is something that even in my, you know, desire to be so inclusive, I never thought about. I never thought, so also in your story, you can link music. And sometimes I would put the lyrics, allow for the lyrics to be up. And sometimes I wouldn't. And even in one of these um, closed caption post that I just did the other day, I did the closed caption with the video and I covered my mouth with text. And there's some, you know, people out there that read your lips. And so I blocked that off. Even, you know, trying to be so inclusive, you, there's still things that you can always be learning. Um, I think this is wonderful. There's ways that you can um, be more inclusive to those um, that are hearing impaired or in any form, even in your post. Um, you can go into your settings and you can add um, accessibility to others uh, with your photos, with your the text. Um, so yeah, it's really even just opened up this whole like, oh, oh. and uh, actually with COVID, I've gotten, um, I've done more video texting um, where you just record your video instead of actually texting to someone. So I record my response and I send it. And that's actually increased my um, comfortability with doing video posts. And it's also really nice because I get a good response and people are like, oh, it's so good to see your face, you know? And it's, it's sweet. So, but you, I mean, I'll be frank, you also get people that are like, I don't want to see your face. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, Summer sent me one um, yesterday when we were talking about this and it, it felt like a present. It was really nice. <laughs> and I loved it. And then I felt like, oh, I, I don't feel like I'm worthy to make a video in response um, at the time. But I do think it's such a great way to connect with people. It, and then they get the context of everything. I think that's why video is so important. I get to see where you're sitting. I get to see where you're recording, how you look today. I feel more connected to you as a human. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's uh, 
it's I think that it is powerful. You again, you add that human aspect. So you're not just someone that's posting stuff. You know, there's a lot of us follow business accounts or creative. I find that a lot of artists and creatives will hide behind their art. So a lot of times you don't see the artist, right? And then they'll get, they'll have these moments where they, you know, will be vulnerable and they'll show their face and they get this overwhelming response um, because they've put their face to their art. And that does mean something to people, you know? And just with the video, I mean, I share screenshots of my video chats because they're not always glamorous. Um, you know, sometimes my face will get caught rolling my eyes or I, you know, and it's just, I don't, yeah, you just, you just do it. You just do it. Um, yeah. And it's kind of nice that you're, you're trying to get up to connect people, um, and get their feedback too. I, I think you do a really good job of that but you're not diminishing who you are doing so. And I think that's a huge thing, especially as a woman, um, you know, how, how do we interact with people and, and still feel valued, you know? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I, I, the thing, okay, so the thing that is a good thing and a bad thing, I think, and why I feel like sometimes I need a secretary is, so of course you can filter your responses that you get. You can make the choice to not talk to everybody or if you see, you know, that someone's starting their message off to you and it's, you know, the first words are not very nice, you can make the choice to ignore it. But I choose to engage with everyone because I feel like, okay, I'm gonna hear what you have to say and then you are gonna hear what I have to say, <laughs> you know? So, but, I mean, there's been people out there that have, you know, they've brought in my mind, even when they've sent me a hateful message. And then I figure out, well, you don't really hate my message. You know, this is something that you have, you know? Oh, so I, I think that that's, that's where, I think that that's where a lot of the, that my storyline success has came from is because I'm willing to have the conversations, willing to engage, willing to talk. Um, yeah, and so people keep coming back. I, I share a lot. Um, so sometimes like my friends will say, oh, good grief. Like, you know, it's an actual hour long TV show to watch your storyline every day. And I'm like, yay, but this is real life news. Watch it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but you do do a good job. Like for right now, there's a slide up that has your um, World Meat Festival memory, I think. Yes, from last year. Yeah, you do a good job of, of not looking at just where you are now, but then where you have been in the future. You post family pictures that I mm -hmm. adore. You're adorable. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we get to see just this huge picture of summer rather than just this one kind of glimpse of her art is that something that you do intentionally you think i think so i think so i always i always want to call you know so much light to our community because it it really means so much to me um and so like the world beat was supposed to be, you know, last weekend and it broke my heart that we couldn't have it. And I thought, well, here's, I have memories of it so I can share those, you know, and I got messages from people that said, you know, oh gosh, I've lived in Salem my whole life. I didn't know this happened on the riverfront every year, you know? And I was like, oh goodness, come next year, you know? Um, so it's, yeah. So it's, I don't, I don't know. It's a, uh, I post the things that I love and I love our community. Um, with recent stuff, I've had to post the things that I don't love and it breaks my heart, you know? Um, but it's part of our community too. So, Absolutely. and yeah. like Greta, like, I think this platform can be used for good and for action rather than just feeling really crummy about something. Um, right. Let me advance to another slide. 
because I think you mentioned being positive and I think mm -hmm. this gratitude posts that you post often, is it, is it daily? Is that how often? Every day. Post? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's I usually my first post in the morning oh, is to show gratitude because that's my, that's my practice. As soon as I open my eyes, whether my, it's my alarm going off or Charlie jumping on my face or my neighbor. Charlie's a dog. <laughs> yeah, Charlie's you my know. dog. <laughs> um, I say thank you. I say thank you that I'm, that I'm waking up, that I'm breathing, that I'm opening my eyes. And so it always starts with gratitude. And so when I approach each day on social media, I try to come from that place of gratitude. And I remember in the beginning when I first started that, um, a few years ago, it, I was like, I couldn't find things. I was like, what am I grateful for? You know, and sometimes they're long and detailed and sometimes it's just like, oh, I love donuts, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just, but I, I personally have watched, you know, being full of gratitude really change my life. So yeah, so yeah, I think from my approach on my social media, I come from a real personal place. I promote myself because I'm my own business, you know, so I don't have, I don't necessarily work for a business or work for a corporation or I work for myself. So I promote myself. You do what you want, which I love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then you also share stuff that's tough for people, I think, um, and try to ignite this feeling of you can help change. You can be part of this cause. Do you want to speak about that a little bit, Summer? Yeah. Um, I think this has been really difficult because I want, I don't want to take any powerful message any light from the beautiful lives that are being stolen um but it's it's a choice that i've made to share it in a personal way because people love me out here and so then when they say oh my gosh this sweet gal has had racist things done to her right here in our community then you know that's that brings a whole different personal touch to it, you know, because they just think, what? So it's a response to response to, you know, to respond to something that happens somewhere else, mm -hmm. even though it's really personal, you know, um, but then to bring it back and say like, oh, wait, this is someone that I know, you know, this is someone I attended a class with or someone that I saw at the Saturday market or, you know, someone that I see dancing down the road or digging recycling out of garbages. I mean, so it, you know, it brings it back and then, yeah. So that's, I've gotten an overwhelming response from posts lately that I've made bringing light to, yeah, I really do love our community, but this is also happening too. You know, yeah. And I think I think everybody has their own personal story and um, are often unaware of other people, and that's exactly what social media can do: is give you a glimpse of walking in that person's shoes just for a very short time. Yeah, um, and you do a great job with that. Thank you. And uh, you also help promote recycling a lot, which is awesome. <laughs> I so appreciate the work that you're doing to connect people of showing them how to use the durables that it doesn't have to be an either or, or because of COVID, we have to ditch it. No, we can still bring these things and, yeah. and that's part of our lives. Yeah, yeah. I remember early on, I'll just tell a story. I remember yeah. early on in quarantine, um, one of my neighbors was really like summer, they don't leave their home. And one of the things every day I did for them was going to get a Slurpee at our local 7-Eleven. And so I kind of, you know, locked it down. It was like maybe only a Slurpee once a week. But I had went in there after not being in there for just a week with the reusable cup, you know. And one of the 7-Eleven workers was like, stop, you have to throw that cup in the garbage. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> I will take my cup back home, but the, you know, there's no need to throw it away. And he, you know, but it was like, <laughs> 
I think, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's a, it's a sensitive time out there. Um, but yeah, I just, even in my master recycling pre-quarantine, um, I just would, it was a good opportunity to have conversations with people out there when they, you know, I would bring my cup or my mug or my utensils. That was always a big thing when I bring my own utensils. And then, you know, even my friends would be like, what is this that you have here? You know, why do you have your own chopsticks? You know, and so, but all that stuff, you know, opens the conversations. I've been at, I was at a yoga and beer after a yoga beer event and we were, you know, eating and drinking afterward. And I had my own reusable napkin and my own utensils. And a lady came from across the restaurant and said, Oh, what do you, what do you have here? You know, and it opened this whole conversation. And so I love that. And just, I don't I didn't have to say anything. I didn't have to say, Oh, here's my, you know, jar that I've decorated. Look how pretty it is, mm -hmm. but just having it. Yeah. And I think also having a approachable attitude um, to where people will come up and approach me, you know, helps. So totally. Yeah. Thank you so much, Summer, for sharing these tips. It was great to hear Thank the backstory. You. Yeah. Um, so we have some time for questions. Let me just go through really quickly about, um, Feel free to follow us on our social media accounts. These are the ones we use the most for environmental services through Facebook. It's MC Enviro Services on Instagram, which we just kind of got started um, this year, MC Environmental Services. And then we also have a lot of videos through MC Enviro Services on YouTube as well. So I'm going to send out, don't feel like you need to write that down. I will send out those links. Um, and then also I'm going to do a shameless plug for our virtual events. We have quite a few things planned in the future. Even some of these things aren't even on the list yet, but you can get the first, you know, just off the press information by going to mcrecycles.net and clicking on virtual events button at the top. And that will bring you to our virtual events uh, page where you can view all upcoming webinars and events. Um, I'm going to have a zero waste talk um, on July 7th, so 7-7 at 7 p.m. So if you're interested in zero waste and how to get more active in your community, as well as how we get um, just our community talking about zero waste and um, implementing that more, feel free to join us there. But there's a lot of different things. There's even past events that um, you can go and just listen in to um, some of the old webinars. So all of that good, is good information and still timely. Um, so I want to open it up for questions. Um, oh, and Kelly Bell is asking Summer, what's the best way to reach you offline about questions that she hasn't thought of yet? Is there a good contact information? Oh yeah, you can um, email me at manicdirteater um, at gmail. That's my email. Um, and then I yeah, you can call me too or text me. I don't know if I should give out my number, but not Instagram message you, right? right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, I um, but yeah, yeah. Help. Please feel yeah. free to contact me about anything. Perfect. I will put your email, um, Summer, in the email that I'm sending out to everybody who's uh, um, watched and tuned in today. All okay. right. Does anybody else have questions? Because, gosh, we have Summer here. Um, I can help answer some businessy kind of questions. Um, anyone? Yes. Uh, Jessica? Hi, Robert. How are you doing? Hi. I'm great. How are you doing? Great. It's good to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, likewise. I'm just wondering, so as we uh, engage with others on social media, is there a way we can log, like how much time we spend so that we can uh, accrue the hours to complete our payback of the uh, community service? Absolutely. So I just talked with Alan Pennington, who's um, taking over the Master Recycler class. Um, and he pretty much said that he is open to you guys doing your payback hours via social media. So you could just um, talk to him about kind of what your plans are going to be for that. Um, he was talking to some Master Recyclers about creating videos 
that um, just can be posted there. And videos take a lot more work. So of course that will probably, you know, um, count for more of your hours. But just make sure you touch base with him before you start thinking about, you know, doing all this work and then submit it to him if that works for you, Robert. Does that answer your yeah. question? Yes, thanks. Yeah. But honestly, um, for us, and especially during this time of COVID, the more master recyclers we can get to amplify our message, the better it's going to be. And we know that all of you are like amazingly powerful connectors. So we totally would love any help possible. Thank you, Robert. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, feel free to put your questions in the group chat if you want to, or you can pop on. It's up to you. So, Jessica, we have a question from Jessica. Um, is there a way to take the Master Recyclers course virtually, or are you waiting until we can meet in person again? Yeah, so it sounds like right now, um, it, the person who's running at Allen, he really loves to have everybody together and feel connected as a team. And that is such an important aspect of Master Recyclers, um, just because you get to know people and those people become like your core cohorts that you're gonna ask questions later and whatnot. There's also a lot of field trips um, that you kind of need to be in person to visit. So he's been trying to work that out. I don't know if we um, have an answer of, of yes or no quite yet. There is a recycling one-on-one -on -one class that you could take um, via the, um, the Oregon State Extension that you can learn just the nitty gritty uh, you know, basics of our solid waste system. There's also all those webinars. So Alan's already hosted quite a few webinars um, that you can tune into that kind of give you quick kind of synopsis of, of the class uh, topics already. So, Feel free though to sign up for the interest list and Alan will keep you connected. So go to mcrecycles.net and then click on Master Recycler. And then at the very top right hand side, there's a Mass Recycler interest list and he'll try to keep people informed of activities and events that are happening. That's a great question. Thank you. Rachel, is that your dog? Who let the dogs out? Dogs. Oh, Alan, you're here. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I just answered a question that I think you would have been better answering. No, no, I, you did such a great job. I just kept my mouth shut until I realized that the dog was um, coming through loud and clear. That's what German Shepherds do. Um, yeah, so if any more questions about that for um, the other Jessica, just uh, just send us an email and we'll, we'll help you. Because the mastery, because we probably are, we're shooting for a class in, in the winter in January, end of January. So if uh, whatever, but if you want to get started, there is the Recycling 101, which is a statewide uh, program. And it's a, it's a pretty good, um, pretty good overview of what's going on in Oregon. So I would encourage you to take that on if you're interested as well. And uh, another plug for Mass Recyclers. I, I took the class in 2012 before I started working for Marion County. And I met the coolest, most interesting people, um, and then went on the best field trips ever. So um, I think it's definitely a worthy class um, to, to spend some of your time doing if, if you're interested in that kind of work. It's wonderful. It, I, I strongly recommend it for everyone. Um, it really opened even though I have been, you know, a recycler my entire life, it 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 was just wonderfully eye opening. Yeah. Um, and Alan presents the information in such a wonderful way that's really easy to learn. Um, the field trips, yes, that's oh yeah. So mm -hmm. please take the class. I see a lot of master recyclers in here, which I love. Um, but if you haven't, it's definitely something that's, yeah, and, you know, then you can, you can literally be official and people really, they really do take your word when you say you should, you should, you know, re not buy this. You should reduce, you, you know, using this because, and I'm a master recycler with Marion County and it's. 
Yeah, they do. They look at you as an expert and then all those problems come out of the word work and ask you random questions about very random things. Um, the other thing that you mentioned is that there are a lot of mass recyclers on this call. So um, I just want to point out too that we didn't set this up because uh, technically as a government agency, we're not allowed to do groups on Facebook, but there is a master recycler group for Marion County. So type in, um, just do a search, uh, Marion County Master Recyclers, and you can get some more information there too. So you can have offline kind of conversations just with your master recyclers. And um, are there, there more questions, Rachel? Um, there aren't more questions yet, but I wanted to point out one of the great things about having Summer and some of our other folks that we've connected with that do their own social media about a variety of top topics, but um, always throw in some of the great environmental stuff. Um, I live in Marion County, but I live in Jervis, Oregon, which is a very little, small, tiny um, town, which we have, I think, four businesses, if you count, five, if you count the post office, that are active. And so um, for me, when I'm going into Salem or I'm going into other parts of you know, Salem Kaiser, how do I kind of know who I want to visit? You know, the great restaurants, um, you know, who is a small business that's sourcing sustainably? And so a lot of times following people, like especially summer, I'm like, oh my gosh, Space Club had vegan donuts. Who I, I would have ever never known, number one, what Space Club was, number two, that they had vegan donuts. So it's kind of great because you're finding as you're connecting to people who are real and authentic um, and if you're being real and authentic you are connecting with people but you're also giving them this great amount of resources and i remember um, when we did our toy swap we did a lot of well i didn't jessica did a lot of uh media social media around the toy swap and we got really great promotions um, but when i was in there actually at the event and talking to a few people and how did you hear about this oh i saw it on summer's instagram i saw you know i talked to jay you know all of these different people that share this message for us that's how sometimes we're we're getting things in they might not see our official posting but um they've seen your guys postings and you mean something to them therefore they're either going to participate or donate or even get more information so i thank you guys and um if you haven't signed up for um, Summer's Instagram account, you really should. It's a ton of fun. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Um, Thank and then you, I Rachel. Just, po or just mentioned that uh, Kelly Bell from Lane County said that they're going to have a master recycler class, it looks like, coming up maybe spring 2021, um, a live class. But in the meantime, um, you can reach out to them to uh, about theirs coming up. So they're going to have a virtual class, it looks like. So there's a lot happening. Um, and it's just feeling, you know, once again, tons of content, a little bit of time, but, um, you know, following summer, reaching out to uh, other master recyclers for that information, following hashtags, all of those things are really great things. Um, thank you, everybody, for participating today and tuning in check out the virtual events page and I will be sending you all the links. So if you don't have any more questions, Rachel, do you see any more? I do not make a check really quick. Okay. I am, not, oh, one new message, hang on, we're gonna jump down. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is, this is a great place and maybe somebody knows this for our, our Washington counterpart. Um, I live in Washington on the coast. My daughter is in this Bowerman's Miss Bowerman Basin's Outstanding Team, and her social impact initiative is reducing the use of single use plastics. Good for her. Um, we will look for a class in a larger city and maybe we could bring it to our community. That's, cool. a, that's a great project, is how do you bring something like this um, all across? So I don't know if anyone has any, is there a master recycler of links in Washington that anyone knows about, but. Yeah, and I don't know quite where they are, but um, no, get on Google and search for that. But also, it may not have to be a master recycler class. Do a search of your friends and just say, hey guys, 
I'm interested in this. Is anybody else interested in it? And then see if you can get a community um, on social media caring about that, that you can move forward. Uh, I do that oftentimes when things aren't working well with the county and I'm not getting anybody noticing anything. I'll reach out to my people and I'll get way more um, interested people and then we can work together to move forward. So a lot of these things are um, really grassroots fed and you can totally use social media for that. It's great. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Summer. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jessica. It's great seeing you, Master Recyclers. Thank you so much. Take yeah. care. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.